Blog Talk Radio. Here at ACO Radio, American Communications Online, or any affiliated stations or websites are not responsible for what guests, hosts, or call-ins may say. All programming is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Hello, world. Welcome to American Communications Online Broadcasting. And this is TJ Marsh ET Radio in Gulf Breeze, Florida. And we're uh, broadcasting out of New York with the Vox Company on Block Dog Radio. And today we've got a wonderful lady out of California. And her name is Johanna Derbalowski. And uh, Janet Careless and my co host should be calling in in a few minutes from. Uh, Maui, Hawaii, but uh, we're all doing our wise women, and we're going to see how we can use quantum and get uh, Joanna to help us figure out what all we're going to be doing in the future together as uh, wise women, so uh, wise quantum women and <laughs> after 2020, but she's the developer of the Quantum Heart Field Experience and is recognized as, as one of our metaphysical teachers and spiritual counselors and energy healing coaches, and Johanna has worked for more than 25 years in the field of metaphysics, in addition to her primary work. She's an ordained minister with the International Metaphysical Ministries, uh, hypnotherapy and matrix energetics practitioner, and she does past life regressions and timeline therapy, and she's a Reiki master and life coach, so everyone knows she'll fit in really well with our group, our ACO club, our ACE Metaphysical Institute. And Janet Lessons just joined me, and then I'll get back to the, uh, Johanna standby. Janet Care Lessons, mm-hmm. that's you from Maui, Hawaii. Yes, it is. I'm calling in. How are you today? Uh-huh. Oh, there's a doggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Are you okay? Yeah, somebody's at the door. Anyway, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Janet Carolissa, and I'm calling you from Maui, Hawaii. I'm the co-host, and this is uh, wi- Wise Wild Women. <laughs> wise wise women. Quantum Women. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I call it Wise Wild Women because uh, I, got a, I got a website. It's on uh, the Wise Quantum Women. Anyway, these are wise, oh, wild and crazy women that are wonderful and wacky but we're wondrous and and amazing creatures that are uh, the divine feminine incarnate on the earth so are you back Uh, is the dog done did you get your uh, door (laughs) yeah it's home i'm sorry joanna and janet and everybody my daughter's banging on my window and that's why my dog's going crazy she left her keys in the house just my luck. Well, you know what I did? I got what? one of those on air. I got it. It's, a, it's red. I got it on Amazon. It says on air. And when I'm broadcasting it, it's in my window. So if they come up, they go, oh, she's broadcasting. Uh. And, I, and it works. It really does work. They're not, I used to have people banging on my door. You know, I can't really control the phone too much. I have to turn it off. But that definitely works. Oh, they, they're uh-huh. off the street traffic. I'm on radio. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're on the radio, dear. We're not going to yeah. have a conversation about what you're going to eat now. Okay. Yeah. So exactly. I'm going to uh, let you finish Johanna's, um, uh, what, what will you do? Her bio. Her bio. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm here. So I want to hear more about oh, Johanna. Der, That's how do you right. pronounce your last name? Der, Belosky. Belosky. So, yeah, we'll get into that. Belosky. So. Okay, we'll get Okay, so back Belosky. to you, uh, okay. Teresa, and then I want to talk to Johanna. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, folks, I apologize. That's what you do when you're remote. Doing, We've been doing this about eight years now, and for those of you, that was Coco. But <laughs> if you're a dog person, she's a little eight-pound shih tzu, and my daughter that's 50, so... Uh, Johanna has a private practice and she's been conducting seminars in the United States and Europe and she teaches uh, classes and I was very fortunate enough to find out that she was just teaching at the A.R.E. Edgar Casey Center and uh, 
uh, they put it up for their people, and uh, then they work out how many people and things like Janet does. And we're going to be doing workshops, we hope, with Johanna in the future. So later on, we hope to have her back to get into more of the details. But she is a, a best-selling author. The Transformation Promise was the name of her uh, recently published uh, workbook called 28 Days to Love, Joy, and Personality. So I guess that's two different things we can talk oh, about. Is. Yeah, they're two different. One's a book, I guess, and one's a workbook possibly. Or is it the same thing, yeah. Johanna? No, it's uh, they're totally separate. One is a book, and um, it's a self-help book to get you to the next level. And the other one is a workbook, more like an exercise routine to actually implement things in your life. Well, so that's such a, love, joy, and prosperity. Those are three wonderful topics today, folks, 28 days. Now, uh, I'm going to let you explain that. I know we're going to have some questions for you, but I told Jean that for the first hour we'd like to get to know and let you talk about where you were born and about yourself and how you got to us today in 2020 because we're all transforming and finding ourselves in this ascension age with lots of relationships and how we're moving forward in the now. And I know you teach all that. So, and then we'll get into the quantum heart field experience and what all you do with Sedona International Metaphysical Ministries and hypnotherapy. So, can you start back in Germany? So, you know, do the when I was a little girl story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was born in Hamburg, Germany, and I grew up in a, well, fairly metaphysical family. And um, so things that most people I've met here had to learn later in life was more natural in my family. And, um, yeah, I grew up also seeing things and then I wanted to fit in and tried not to see anything <laughs> and not to be different. And then the wonderful thing happened the sixties and people were hallucinating. And so I thought, Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> I can just fit in <laughs> and I don't even need to take anything to do that. So, um, yeah. I, and then when, after, high school I went to the University of Maine on a scholarship for one year and I fell in love with the large amount of nature that you still have here and so after going back to Germany I decided it was too crowded and I moved to New York City <laughs> which you know is even more crowded but it's somehow crowded. <laughs> <laughs> That's how That's it happened. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then I moved from there to um, Los Angeles, and I've been there ever since. I love the ocean, so it's home. Where are you in Los Angeles? What part? I'm in Manhattan Beach, just uh, south of the airport. Which, where, which city? Uh, L.A.? Yeah, the city is or, Manhattan Beach, but it's sort of the south end of uh, L.A. L.A., okay. Yeah, my sister-in-law's from L.A. My my husband grew up there, but I just visit once in a while. All right. Well, that's fascinating. So uh, what made you think that New York had less, was less crowded? I'm <laughs> going back to that. That's hilarious. Well, I, I didn't think so. When I was in Maine, I, I mean, in Maine, I thought I'd never seen that many trees in my life in one place wow. um, uh-huh. and it was beautiful but it was really too cold for me so I moved back to Germany but there as a country it's more crowded you know there's not that many big natural areas anymore but when uh-huh. I came back I got stuck in New York for a few years before moving on from there just how life happens well- that's how life happens. Well, in New York, you can go just a couple hours north and you're in a bunch of forests. At least it was like that 20 years ago. Yeah. Did you cut, Did you discover northern New York's uh, state? It's really beautiful up there. Yeah, I went up and down the coast and uh, 
but I, you know, started to have a job in New York, and mm-hmm. um, I got married in New York, so I stayed, and then we moved out here together, and and I have two adult children, and uh, they are complete California people. Oh yeah, real <laughs> real beach people, both of them. <laughs> so. Yeah. You, so, how are you doing? How's how's things in? Uh, I heard that there's a hot spot there going in Southern California. Are you affected by the coronavirus? No, there I'm more. I'm a little bit more of a hermit, so it hasn't affected me that much because I work mostly oh, on the phone good. and I, um, you know, wear a mask. I'm careful and. It's, so it's not that big of a change for me. No, no, I'm at home Luckily. all the time too. So, yeah, that's good. So tell us about your practice. So what kind of so you do? Tell us all the things you do in your practice. Um, I well, I do. Before Corona, I taught workshops. <laughs> um, yeah. So right, <laughs> right now I'm not doing that. But I taught workshops on intuition or how to be your own best psychic. And it's geared towards, I love to teach because I think if you, you know, just give people a reading or you do a healing, then that wears off after a while unless they can grasp it and really elevate themselves. So my mission is to teach them how to raise their own energy and, um, Keep it there, <laughs> wherever they're getting it to. Wherever it is. So how yeah. does somebody so become more psychic? That that always was a curiosity to me. Like I I came in psychic, and and some people just aren't psychic, and then I hear about people teaching people how to be psychic, but I couldn't teach. Some of the people I know they they couldn't be psychic if they got hit by a math truck. I mean they just <laughs> aren't naturally. Psychic, but I came in and I could see ghosts and extraterrestrials and interdimensionals and uh, out of body project and all kinds of stuff. But I I wouldn't begin to know how to teach that. What? How would you approach that? Well, I haven't met anybody yet that doesn't have psychic abilities, and even the people that I thought could never get it always, in my experience, turned out to be actually better than the ones that I thought were easier. I think mostly what you have to teach them is to trust, um, to trust what comes to them. And you can teach that okay. in several ways. I mean, I have a whole, you know, program over a couple of years to teach people that. But um, I think the biggest point is we all see things and we all dream things at night and mm-hmm. we have thoughts that are really far out. But most people don't trust that that is actually something that is real. So they dismiss it. And, and, and don't uh, their beliefs or their preconceived notions get in the way as well? Like they may see, you know, ETs, but they don't want to see it. So they uh, use yeah. like, for example, their religion and they're, they're not going to see it no matter what anybody says. No, it's like when, um, when the ship's, Columbus ships came to South America or so this, I can't remember the story exactly but only yeah. the um, only the shaman could see the ships and none of the other right. people could only see ripples in the water it's because mm-hmm. that's what our brain works our brain is a computer so what we don't input into it it cannot recognize so if I see a tree and I don't know it's a tree then it's just some fuzzy colors and because my brain doesn't know what it is. So that's the same thing. You have to sort of open yourself up to input into your brain to recognize what things are and to be open. Now, if you're completely closed off to wanting to learn to see and to be intuitive and psychic, well, then that's not for you. Right. Okay. So I wouldn't I wouldn't try so to So you're not trying to convince anybody. <laughs> No. So you're only working with the people that are wanting, they have a strong desire to 
um, open up to that potential within themselves. Yeah, the the funny thing when I when I used to teach just intuition and psychic development, which was years ago, uh, you know, there's always the wife that brings the husband that doesn't want to come. Oh. And four weeks into the class, the husband's actually getting everything faster because sometimes the people that we think are really dense and don't want to do it. They are also they don't have so many expectations, so things flow a little bit easier. So I've been always very surprised at at the you know what happens or what turns out. I'm actually I'm always uh-huh. surprised. So, so I try not um, to have expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so so and that happens a lot of times. I was teaching. Tantra sometimes, and it wasn't always the woman bringing the man, but it seemed to be that in Tantra it was man bringing the woman, but after a while the woman was like learning faster than the man. So yeah, I think that happens sometimes. The reluctant one that's pulled along becomes the adept and the other one kind of just cruises along. So fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask a question. I forgot what I was going to ask. Okay, so, um, okay, so do you think, with all your years of teaching, who's more psychic, men or women? I I really couldn't say. Um, when I started out teaching, people told me that only women sign up for spiritual workshops, and um, mm-hmm. that was not true. In my experience, I've had classes with a lot more men than women in it. And I had people from different, uh, they have different motivation to to learn to be more clairvoyant. I had attorneys that wanted to get a better feel of the courtroom. And, um, you know, business people, all sorts of people that weren't necessarily on the so-called spiritual path. I mean, we're all on the spiritual path. But it, right. the motivation doesn't really matter. So people come because there's something that they feel they need to improve. And that can come in, in all areas of life and all people. So I can't say okay. I find it equal. Mm-hmm. So how are you adapting in these COVID times? How are you adapting your teachings and your private practice? I stopped I stopped the teaching, so I canceled all my planned workshops for this year, which was very oh. sad because I, I love my Germany workshops. Um, mm-hmm. But I'll hopefully get to do that next year. And my practice is all over the phone, so that didn't make any difference there. Oh, that's good. That's good. TJ, are you back? Are you there? Yeah, I've never left. I've always been here. I took my okay. phone in there. That's why you heard the dog and everything. I was walking to go get my daughter in, but, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, with this uh, way that the you know COVID-19 has affected the world, we're supposed to, as Ascension Age uh, beings, spiritual beings, or those that know about past lives and have older souls that come here to identify how we identify. Is uh, I've been working with a lot of women that have gone above the matrix and recognize stepping into the fifth dimension and uh, looking back at how people uh, identify themselves in their perception of their own matrix they create and filter through and like you said, Johanna, I always had the women bringing the men, and then the men wound up being in our groups and our circles and uh, wanting to catch on, and some of the uh, the women weren't catching on to certain things uh, we were teaching at the time. So uh, I find that funny. But, yeah, I've always taught as a, a teacher that we're all psychics, that not everybody uses it, but we're all psychic. We're all meant to be extraterrestrials just here in a spiritual physical realm to do our our work and to level up somewhat like in the I call it the game of life when I started teaching metaphysics and uh 
Hawaii where Janet is, and then we got into remote viewing and spiritual world network. But uh, the synergy, the synergy we create, that's what I'm looking to do now for 2021 and find people that we all align with. So, Johanna, tell us about uh, your teaching about the past lives because – you said I looked re- uh, familiar, and uh, I don't believe there's any accidents when people cross paths because we just aren't even sure how we really hooked up other than through LinkedIn. But uh, you help people, and now's a good time with uh, the way that we're staying at home now. And so many people that worked it out got to drive all day or drive into L.A. They're now operating as technicians and computers from their home. But uh, let's talk about giving them something further to talk about. Do you work with uh, the women in the quantum heart field experiences? Uh, You've met quite a few around that share the same feeling you do and developing that. And also I'd like to talk about your past life and why I look familiar with you. So why don't you tell people how sometimes we don't know somebody, you know what I'm saying, and try to – Bring yeah. Something around yeah, I mean, we all have that. that moment of instant recognition or we see somebody in a picture or we we meet somebody and we feel we know them. I think everybody's had that experience before. Um, yes. But when I, you know, when I talk about the past lives, I teach past lives, I think it's only important if it is useful to you. I mean, if it's just a fun story, it's a fun story, but it's not actually useful. But if it can actually change something in today's life, or if you can, you know, let go of something that you've dragged around for lifetimes, then it becomes useful to you. So when I teach the workshops, I don't expect people to believe it. And I there's always some people that say, okay, that doesn't really exist. And my answer to that, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you make up a story in your mind or if it actually had any physical substance to that because if we take it a little bit further than what is reality, you know, is it a story just or is there anything tangible to it? Um, so I like to keep it on the level of making it useful. And past life regression to me has been really useful. I had a a phobia of breaking my neck ever since I can remember. And I was always afraid of it. And the older I got, the more um, it impacted my life. And So if I would trip, I instantly would think like, oh, I'm breaking my neck. And I didn't know where that came from. (laughs) And then in a class, a past life regression class, um, it was more of a meditation. The teacher guided us to a past life, and I was uh, someplace, and a fight broke out, and somebody picked me up and threw me against the wall, and I heard this really loud crack, and I broke my neck. And then everything was, went really peaceful right after that happened. And I opened my eyes again. And I thought, wow, breaking my neck is really not that big of a deal. And that was the end of me ever thinking I was going to break my neck. It just completely slipped my mind. It just comes back now when I want to say, okay, past life aggression is it useful to you? And I think, yes, because you come up with these things in this past life scenario, these energies that are stuck or these fears that are stuck, and especially with phobias, you can really unlock the cause of that a lot of times. Have you ever met somebody from a past life? Uh, Like you're saying you, you... You know, Teresa, but have you uh, met anybody in your life that you're leading now, like you know, on a personal level, that you definitely know was from a past life? Like I, I believe that my husband and I have known each other forever in many incarnations. Have you had anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually sure that everybody in my life is not the first time around. 
Right. But yes, and there are some where memories come up that are um, where you actually recognize the person in another lifetime. Yes, definitely. So what's going on between you and TJ? What are you remembering? <laughs> no, I just... Um, was it good, bad, uh, neutral? <laughs> it was good, of course. <laughs> Put it on the spot. No, I, I just familiar. saw her picture <laughs> and I, I thought, you know, I knew her and I thought we've had conversations before. I mean, it was just the feeling that I knew we, we've known each other. Yeah, we click really or, good. I mean, I actually thought we level. knew each other from this lifetime, but it turns out we didn't. Ah. <laughs> well, I did I the same thing. I knew some people from Germany. Yeah. yeah, you do look familiar, and I, I'm not sure how that works, folks, but uh, that's part of our paranormal, spiritual, metaphysical group here, so uh, we love to talk about it to see and the synchronicity and why we cross each other's paths, so... Uh, we can talk about that because uh, hopefully we can learn how to help people do what we do. I've got books here I can teach online, but I've I've got all type of skills. I taught in Hawaii that I enjoyed helping people learn how to be psychic. And the past lives would come up because we were working with Hoa Dynamics and the healing part if they had a lot of anxiety or depression or were working with health issues. And I see in your uh, bio that you've helped a lot of people. And uh, sometimes we have, like I've got a mole I came into this life, a big brown mole on my right leg, but I've covered it with a tattoo of a pyramid and ET stuff. But uh, that's because I I always felt it was ugly. But um, I learned as a child they were called birthmarks. And then I had a strawberry over my heart that I've also covered with a tattoo. (laughs) But I... uh, (laughs) I did that while I was in the military over in Japan. But what do you know about birthmarks? Did you study it in Germany or in your metaphysical work? I I don't know much about birthmarks. I have uh, not thought about that, but that's interesting. It's interesting also that um, that it's called a birthmark, probably something that identifies us in some way. Well, yeah, the, the, no. the, yeah the, the story goes when your birthmark, you possibly got hurt or shot or for some memory to come in. So it'd be my right leg and over my heart. So I guess I got shot through my heart <laughs> while I was a Knights Templar. I have all kind of past life memories and Egypt and, you know, different things. So do you have any of your past lives? You don't have birthmarks then, but. Do you have any past lives that you're willing to to share or how you transform people's memories or tell us how, well, how you work with it? As a yeah, tool. I think the biggest one was having that phobia with the breaking my neck. That was the most vivid and intense one that I had, but I, you know, I had plenty of them. I was uh really afraid of public speaking. I mean, much worse than most people. And uh, I did a past life regression with a colleague. (laughs) Um, I did three of them, actually. And in one of them, I was being um, executed at the marketplace. And there was that feeling of being entertainment. My execution was entertainment. And I could see everybody cheering and... uh, feeling like happy because it was like the Sunday show <laughs> watching the execution <laughs> on the marketplace. Oh, and you. I was terrified. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't feel so good <laughs> being, being executed. But when I came out of that past life regression, I it, the fear went away of public speaking like it was never there before. Wow, wow. So did it was, someone take you under? Are you now? Let's let's yeah. talk about the various levels of uh, therapy because you can do self diagnosis, self hypnosis, and you can also go to a therapist or licensed hypnotherapist in your state. But you're in California. But did you personally discover that uh, being uh, on display in the marketplace? I guess in my vision, I automatically saw 
Salem and, and burning at the stake, but you see all these movies over in Europe too, and maybe you were in Germany. I don't know. Did did you know? Or remember any location or get any, any knowledge? Yeah, actually, it it felt more like France, <laughs> but it felt more like medieval France when it happened. But you yeah, know, I, he was... I have one in France. <laughs> I have one in France too. <laughs> but I just couldn't believe how instantaneously that fear was gone and well, I, yeah. it was um, right good. after so yeah i went to um i went to a colleague and friend of mine because if you do it yourself you can do it but you can't go that deep i agree by yourself i mean it helps to have somebody guide you through it but even in a light hypnotic state you can you can resolve a lot of things. So it mm-hmm. doesn't need to be, you don't need to be completely put out. I actually prefer with my clients when they're somewhat conscious because that way they um, they know what's going on. You know, you're aware of it more. It's not like you wake right. up from a deep sleep and say, oh, wow, well, that was a weird dream, but you kind of go through it. And I also, I studied with Michael Newton who... Um, did the, oh, you did! Uh, oh, yeah. Now I'm jealous. I've been wanting to do that. How, he doesn't do it anymore. So, did you study with him directly, Doctor? Yeah. Yeah. No, so he just classes. retired. Yeah. Yeah. He he um, said, "I'm after 40 years, I'm not teaching anymore." So, but he had taught like thousands and thousands of people. Over 40 years. Yeah, and he had this endless long waiting list of clients. <laughs> but I, I was kind of fascinated by that. To me, that was really interesting to get people to hypnotize them into where they set up this next lifetime. And he's dead. So the, did he die? The whole. Yeah, September I think, 2016. I think he did. Yeah, he died in 2016. What year? 2016. Oh, okay. so- Okay. Yeah, well, he retired and then um, September twenty second. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. After he retired, he completely went off the public eye. But mm-hmm. um, but it was very fun learning that from him, and I've I've used that with clients, and it's been I I love to do past life regressions. Purely selfish thought. It's always an interesting kind of story. So, so tell a, us, um, when you do that life, he has a special life between lives type of of uh, hypnosis where he takes you deeper and deeper, what is into the theta state, and so you go really, really deep, and then yeah. you're able to go to where you went between lives. And yeah. uh, since you, you studied with him, I've just read a couple books, but apparently we have a common theme no matter where we're from, say we could be you know, from Europe or from uh, uh, China, it doesn't matter where you're from. We're met by a guide. Every person has their own individual guide. Um, sometimes we go through to our family, but sometimes we go to the council. You have to, why don't you t- tell the sequence of it? I know there was a common sequence, but then you eventually get to the point, go like to group therapy with your soul family that you know each other. And then there's, there's surrounding groups. So there's like about 10 to 30 people in your soul, immediate soul family. But then there's like, it's like a, we can chart it. It's like circles around. And those are the, the background characters or people that come in and out of your lives. It might be your, there's, uh, you know, uh, your boss or, you know, whatever. If you have 20 children, they may not, may not all be in your direct soul family, but they're in this auxiliary circle. Anyway, go ahead and tell us from your perspective about the Michael Newton Institute information. Well, the, 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 the Michael took right. Newton's um, sessions, they took three some hours, the ones that he mm-hmm. did with people to go really into depth into that. I, I did not do that with my clients. Um but I, and then he categorized, I mean, he's had thousands of people that he did that with, and he categorized them, and people would, a certain group of people would hear music, and a certain group of people would uh, meet with their counsel, and a certain group would just return to their soul family, 
And um, so I've never, I mean, I've taken his classes, but I never had a session with him. Oh, okay. But uh, Now, how did you take his like, classes? Were they in person um, in those days? Yeah, he used to teach. And he, when I got my hypnotherapy um, certification, he was a guest teacher, and I definitely signed up for that one. <laughs> um, but in my own in my own practice, I thought it's it's really incredible when you go you enter that through a past life, so you regress somebody into their past life, and then you go to the end of that life. And then when they leave that life, you go, they go into that soul state. Mm -hmm. And I love doing that because to me, it was just really interesting what people would see there. Just incredible. What are some um, of the things that people reported to you? Well, one thing that really stuck or came to mind was uh, I had several musicians for a while that were coming and... um, some of them heard very different kind of music and it really, um, they went back to their composing afterwards to utilize that, what they heard in the in-between life mm-hmm. as music. And um, what else did I have? I had uh, some people that in the in the first stage of uh, that they weren't aware of the fact that they died, and that's something that's always somewhat fascinated me. That a lot of people die without being conscious of it, so they kind of remain in that moment of of mm-hmm. um, right before they died, and so part of the right. energy is stuck there, which is then turns them into earthbound spirits or. Um, if they do eventually move on, they come back and, and still deal with that. A lot of, you know, very fear of certain things like phobias can come from that, like mine, about breaking my neck and being stuck there. And when I went through the whole thing again, it just let go because I went from there to everything was peaceful, everything was light and um, beautiful, and I was just floating, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's like not a bad thing breaking your neck. <laughs> that was actually so. Well, that's an interesting thought. That's an interesting thought. So people, some people who um, die and don't know that they died, they're kind of stuck. They get stuck in, we call it the bardo. But I, I hope that's not everybody. I mean, what if you're like, you know, sitting in your house and a a bomb hits your house or a meteor hits your house or something or a gas explosion, are those people stuck because they blow up and they didn't know that they're dead? Or is there a way for them to come out of it and realize, oh, I'm dead? Well, I think that the, and this is purely my personal opinion, I think the Mm -hmm. deeper your attachments are, the more you get stuck. And I also believe that your attachments are what forms the scenario for the next lifetime. So the less attachments you have at the moment of death, the more freely you move across that doorstep. Mm -hmm. But if um, if it happens at a moment where you think like, oh, I haven't finished this or I haven't seen this person or I must tell this, then you get stuck in that attachment or, you know, a big part of your energy gets stuck in that particular attachment. And then you try to come right back because you need to fulfill whatever that was. So to get that unstuck so people can actually move on and move on more freely. But ultimately, it's all about the attachments. The less you have, the better. (laughs) We had a... um... Uh, three people that were killed in the flood, they tried to cross the road during a flash flood, and there were people on both sides saying, don't try it, it's too high, and they tried it anyway, and it ended up catching their vehicle and washing it down the stream, and then they hit a giant rock, and it, it 
you know, flipped the the, tr- the jeep, and they were they broke their necks and their skulls, and then they were washed out the sea. So the the man was my uh, the co-owner of the property at the time. We were called Hui Partners here, and when I first moved here, uh, the land was co-owned by this other guy and his wife and two children. And um, so he, we all tried to rescue them. We had a workshop going here. We did workshops too, and this was a tantra workshop. And everybody grabbed, you know, their uh, their stuff, and they went out and tried to find them. And they went up and down the stream, and nobody could find them. And then at nine nine p.m. the, the evening tide brought them in. There were three of them: two men, uh, two women, and, and a man. But the students that were here, they were staying here. Um, there was about a half dozen that were staying here. The rest were down in hotels. And um, the one guy said, oh, I was starting to fall asleep. And, and his name was Jim, the guy who died. Jim came over to me, and he kind of sat down at the foot of my bed. And, and so this guy was talking to him. And he said, I had to convince him that he was dead. But after talking to him, he said, oh, that must be it. I am dead. So he he kind of um, he hung around for two or three years, and so he would come and after all the students left, he would come and he would he would sit on my bed, but he would sit on my husband's feet. But of course, it was a ghost, and my husband couldn't feel it. But I would I would get up to go to the bathroom, and I'd see something you know sitting on his feet, and I and at first I. I didn't pay attention. I then the one time I just got curious and I I went out my astral form and I and there he was. So if I you know I don't know how I do this. I just did it. So I started working with him because he was really distraught that he left his wife and his two sons. They weren't grown yet. They were teenage boys and they really needed their father and they were devastated. Oh, and then to go to the end of the story. So then. He'd been, he was coming on a regular basis, and I said, well, you know, I can't do this every night. I've got to sleep, and, you know, because I have a life I'm living. So I would meet him a couple times a week and just see how he was doing. He wasn't doing well. But then his son uh, did, uh, I guess, suicide by motorcycle. He, he got drunk. He was driving really fast, and he's driving down Kihei, and he hit some tourist head on. And took over the vehicle. I guess that was traumatic for them. Go to Maui for your dream vacation, and, and some guy hits you with his motorcycle and kills himself. But as soon as that happened, um, he, uh, Jim stopped coming. So what happened was the son came and got him, and, and they both went on to the other side together. So, and, and we were going, wow, they're gone. They're both gone. So the kid had grown, was born on this property, had grown up here. So, anyways, that's kind of what happened to me. Anybody else have anything to share on that line? Yeah, my um, one one of my teachers in a oh, long time ago, Jerry Gross, he used to make it his uh, thing to go out every night and help somebody and tell them, "Hey, you know, you're dead. Move on." And we all <laughs> wow. the TV shows about that it's now, so but <laughs> he. He said, you know, just if you go through, his theory was that um, people are so drugged now, like in hospitals when they die, they we drug them so much that they don't actually know when death happens themselves. Right. Uh huh. So he talked about that a lot. So he said, you know, hospitals are just so crowded with people that just don't know that they've actually, you know, left this body. Uh-huh. And so he would go at night when his wife went to sleep, he would go and leave his body and go into the hospitals and help all these people. Wow, that's, that's pretty nice for him. Time. Yeah, I remember, Janet, I told you you had me working. Janet, uh, in my dreams, Janet's one of my people from past lives. And <laughs> Janet, I don't know if you'll think I'm nuts or not, probably be open-minded to it, but in a uh, lucid dream, I have... You lose your dreams in other places and plan it. So sometimes I don't know which dimension I'm in. I come back and go, wow. But I, I was looking for Janet in this hospital, but she had got me there. So I think she's one of my guys to as a planet because I tell her she's always trying to save everybody. 
But I was working all night, and I uh, these people and these large, huge steps. And I remember going, how am I supposed to push these people up these steps, you know, because they were, like, different. It was in the future, I think, because they were moving different towers, different hospitals. I had people going down ramps. And then somebody left three guys in the middle between three of these beautiful big towers, but they had moving staircases like in Harry Potter, and they would wind around like some, you know, oval Christmas ornament or something. I'm going, how – I don't want to climb up all those steps, but this guy I – I talked to one man, and he said, oh, she left me here. I'm like, gee, thanks, Janet, because I come back and say, Janet, <laughs> I was in the hospital working all night. You, you keep getting these people in all these poor planets, and I'm working all night. So, yeah, I get that, but some people don't do interdimensional travel. or I don't know that there's an institute. Now, Monroe Institute, Newton Institute, Janet – we need to find something in between there for all of us. And Johanna could surely help because there's uh, people all over that do Skype and, and workshops and how to help all these people with their soul purpose. You know, Gail Barkley and Maui does soul purpose, Maui.com, and she's really good. Uh, she's with the Michael Institute, Mike, uh, Michael Newton. Michael I don't know Newton. if you've heard of her. Yeah. Is, that, is that still going, Johanna? Is the Michael Newton Institute still going? Yeah. You know, I, I don't yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's yeah, still, still going because I sort of moved on into my own thing. So. Okay. They call it, so let's uh, focus. Training. They call it training now, but they they still have uh, upcoming training, and uh, well, they know, must have so, people that uh, like a that learned how to do it and are training other people. So yeah, let's focus on Johanna because I'm going to have to leave in about 15 minutes because I have another, uh, um, I had a previous engagement. But you guys can continue, you ladies can continue the conversation. You wise, wild women can continue the conversation. <laughs> but I want to focus on Johanna, well, I, the few minutes I have before I have to take a break because I have another show that I previous engagement. So, Let's talk about what you do. So what do you do that's different than your training? Because, you know, I've, I've trained with a lot of people, and the teacher will always say, you know, well, I don't want to, the student might say, I don't want to copy you, and the teacher, would, my teacher was one of those, Hal Stone, who's a um, young therapist, and he said, well, go ahead and try, try to copy me. You couldn't copy me if you, you know, if you wanted. So... So, of course, we're not going to quite copy whoever taught us. We're going to take everything and put our own twist in it. So what is your twist on all these uh, therapies that you learned? I, le- I learned all these therapists, therapies probably from myself because I was trying to figure out what, what, um, what fit or what worked for me. And they all were good tools, but they weren't quite what I was looking for. So I, I mm-hmm. kept looking for something new or something different. And in the end, I think I, um, well, in the end, it's good to say, I hope there's more, but <laughs> um, what it came to is that I think what's really important is that you live from your heart. So to get there mm-hmm. is the most important thing. Because I think the heart is the center, and um, I try to get people through their heart back to the source energy. And all the other things are just things that happen along the way, and and we have to deal with them, and we get to clear them, and we need to let go of attachments because every attachment comes um, wrapped in a blanket of pain. Yeah. We have to let it go again eventually. So, but when you are in your heart, you you have everything. You're part of everything. You have everything. So that's the center point. So that's where I like to get people to. And but we also live in this third dimensional world with things that happen and things that upset us and things that make us happy. So how to navigate in that? And I, when I wrote the book, The Transformation Promise, I named it The Transformation Promise because we are always transforming and we cannot stay the, the same. So it is a promise. Um, 
it's one I use myself when I have a particular bad day. I know it will change again. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Not to worry yeah. and to get too upset about it because uh, next five minutes it will have changed somewhat. That's but right. I divided people up in, uh, into obviously you can't do it because we're whole beings, but that they that we have a physical structure, a physical part, the body, the the houses, and everything, which is very tangible, and we can see, you know, if something's broken, we can repair it. And then we have an emotional, social structure, which is the friends, environment, work, and. And we're we're intertwined in all those things, and then we have a, a spiritual structure, which is the belief system, and that's the most rigid one. Even though it's the easiest right. to change, because in order to change your belief system, you just have to change one thought. But we really do change that one because we want to hold on to that because that's our main thing. So, I try to get people to become aware of where they are what is their belief system to really be aware of how are you entangled in your environment what what is clouding your decision and i came to that mainly from clients that you know you want to help them i mean when i was young and eager i wanted to really help people and i couldn't understand why they didn't want to be helped mm-hmm. and then i realized that uh, I'm the same way. Like if somebody that sees something that I really need to change, it may not be the thing I'm ready for. But mostly, if you understand where you're where you're stuck or what this web is that you have created in your life, then you can make a decision and you can start to get out of it. And um, I like that picture of we are the spider that creates the web of our life, but we are also the fly that is caught in it at the same time. Right. Yeah, that's a good (laughs) show. So we we have to be aware of both sides because, again, you know, when we create this beautiful web of our life, it also becomes a lot of attachments that then, you know, create havoc in our lives and pains in our lives so I'd like to teach people to be get to know themselves to be self-aware whatever that means to them and then go from there and key to that is being in the heart and so I named my business quantum heart field because it's it's that field of oneness of being at one with the source energy and from there, anything is possible. So, so that's, this, that's very interesting to me. Go ahead. Go ahead, TJ. Uh, okay. No, you go ahead. You know, I, I find that to be very interesting because, you know, we're looking at, you know, like this election was a bunch of beliefs. When you look at religion, it's a bunch of beliefs. So um, a lot of us come in, we're born into a society and we we imprint the beliefs of our society. We imprint the beliefs of our parents. But some some conform and some rebel. And it's like if you have five siblings, you're going to see some that go along with what the, the parents taught them and some that go polar opposite and then some are kind of in the middle. So there's three children in my family and uh, my sister's more the conformist and I'm more the rebel. My brother's somewhere, especially as he gets older, he, he see him believing a lot of what the parents uh, kind of, it's like they feed it to you, right? And you either swallow it or you don't. So how do you teach people as they age to separate themselves from the beliefs that were imposed upon them to who they are as a soul and what will serve them for their, their highest good? Um, so that they can give away, they can get rid of beliefs that are limiting them and keeping them from their spiritual uh, and soul progression and progress. I think the, for the, the most important thing is to self-knowledge, to be aware, to really think about, and that's what I'm guiding them in the book for, to really examine 
what are your belief systems? Because most of us don't really think about that. We, we take some on or we have some opinions and then the opinions become beliefs because we repeat them. But when you're aware of your belief systems, then you can look at it. But I, I'd say that's really the first big steps because most people are not really aware of what's behind their belief system. And then, uh, I mean, if you look out at the world and it doesn't really make any sense a lot of times. I mean, I look here at um, there's a lot of people, especially in America, that have come across that say, you know, we are Christians, we believe in Jesus, and um, but their life is really about accumulating wealth to themselves, which is not really what he taught as far as I've read it. And right. I have no problem with that, but I'm just saying you need to look at what are you doing, what is that really your belief system, or is that a, do you have a different one without... I, I try not to ever tell people what to do, but I say get to know yourself right. and be in that right. yourself. And then, you know, when we have when you have the duality of the planet, <laughs> which we have <laughs> duality in everything, right? That's always going to continue, and there's always going to be right and left, day and night, good and evil. But when the pendulum is in the middle, it's in the heart. Right. And I the heart uh, is the center chakra of the whole system. Yeah. And so if we can get ourselves to be there, then we can see that the other thing is just the, you know, back and forth pendulum, but if I say I am right about something, then I am assuming that you are wrong if you think anything differently. So w- what does that do? I mean, if you do something and I say, well, this is wrong because I am right, which, of course, is how we all feel. Mm -hmm. But we are creating this duality because we instantaneously make everybody else wrong the moment we say I'm right. So we are never really right or wrong. I put it a different way. You know, it's like everybody has a right to believe what they want to believe, and as long as well, they're right then when somebody else's begins, so they can't be hurting, harming, or him said, do no harm. So if you're harming somebody else, oh, um, then, you know, you're violating somebody else's rights. But, you know, individually, if you want to believe that the sky is uh, green or purple or something, whatever, <laughs> that's your prerogative, you know. Who, who are we to question somebody else's reality? Right, yeah. so have at it, enjoy yourself. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, just, I, if you wanted to change yourself, then you have to change yourself on all levels, and you have to um, figure out what that entails in your in your web. Like a lot of times, mm-hmm. people stay in a situation that's unhealthy or painful or whatever because they. Um, the moving out of that situation is more scary or more um, painful maybe in the moment than being in, in this other situation. So we we stay somewhere long enough until we're ready to move out of it. But if we become completely aware of all aspects of our situation, a lot of times it's easier to move out of it. Well, that's a good point. So that's one thing that I, I like to do with people to just see what what is it? What makes you miserable? I mean, overall, I think I can say it. Life is not easy. It's hard. There are hurdles. There are pains. The body is, you know, falling apart. <laughs> um so if if we all can be a little bit kinder and make it a little bit easier for anybody else, then we, we're doing a lot. Well, that's important right. for healing, healing and being good and bright and 
many of us are baby boomers, and we're up there now, folks. Uh, <laughs> the lady speaking, Johanna, is a little younger than me, about 10 years, <laughs> but She's a wonderful teacher and a good soul, if you'd like to know her. Now, tell people on the hour here, because Janet's going to have to go, but tell us yeah, I'm gonna how they you. can reach you. How they can reach you. I, I have a website, quantumheartfield.com, that has all the information on how to reach me and get in touch with me. And the book, The Transformation Promise, is on Amazon and other bookstores. And also the 28 Days to Love, Joy, and Prosperity is also available online from most booksellers. Now, is there a way to certify people in California once they go through classes and Zoom or Skype with your company? Because I know a lot of therapists that are certified will certify or give them a certificate for a 28-day or so many hours if they can uh, prove them. I guess you have to prove them or put them in a face-to-face class. But do you have any of that set up yet as a uh, online? Um, no, the, the, the 28 days is just a book to reach for yourself. I've thought about, um, you know, teaching people the quantum heart field. I, I think... It's not important to um, certify people, but I, I love to teach, and if somebody was interested in it, I certainly can do it, but I don't have a training set up as of yet. Okay. Well, this is something Jan and I have been discussing for quite a while, but I guess we're going to be forced into it because of COVID-19. We're hoping we can get out in 2021, but... Folks, we'll be talking about the various healing modalities and uh, the spirit with the Ascension Center. I've had a book here for years. I've taught since 20 or 30 years ago in Hawaii, and uh, I'm thinking about doing some upcoming training. Uh, and I would like Lives Between Lives. You don't have to be certified to the Monroe Institute, but it helps if you studied his uh, idea. They have scholarship opportunities, and they have pre requisites that you have to have 200 certified hours, and then you have to be a hypnotherapist right off to get in. So uh, you can look at what they're doing with their hypnotherapy training. But uh, uh, teaching is what Johanna wants to do and enjoys doing. I know Janet does as well. Janet's as much an organizer, uh, but uh, her husband and uh, teach hypnotherapy. Yeah, we've been teaching. Certified in California through. What's the name of your Teresa? Uh, sister? Uh-huh. Teresa, I'm going to leave. Teresa, I have to leave, so I want to th- say goodbye to everybody. Much love and blessings and aloha. And uh, we'll see you again next Wednesday on another Wise Women episode. And much love okay. and blessings and aloha to you. Okay, goodbye for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joy. Bye. Okay. Well, that was Janet Carroll Lesson of Maui, Hawaii with Aquarian Radio. And uh, she'll be posting shows different places. Now, we have a lot of people calling in, but they usually want readings. You don't do readings, do you? Um, all over the I, I have they, in the past. I mean, I'm, yeah, I do. If they want to ask one question, but let me see. I've got several. Uh, usually they're used to me helping them. Hi, 203. You're live in the, on, the, on the air. Tell us where you're calling from and what your name is. Oh, hi. Is this me? Yes, yes. Hi, Hi. thank you. My name's Pat, and uh, I'm calling from Connecticut. Hi, Pat. Have you called in on Thursdays before on our show? You know, I think I did, but I didn't. I listened, but I didn't get on, I think. I tried a couple of times because I remember your face when I, you know, get online on my computer. Oh, okay, okay. Well, this is Johanna, and Suzanne, I invited her tonight, but she's been working with Psychic Source over in California. But this is Johanna Derbalowski. She's of the L.A. area, and uh, she's got a wonderful book, The Transformation Promise in 28 Days to Love, Peace, and Joy. But uh, we've got several people, but they're used to tuning in, Johanna, and blog talk to look for spirituality but were you just listening or did you want to try to uh ask a question and oh i'm always looking, always looking um i don't know if you just want to do since you're not really doing readings if you just want to do a general anything you pick up 
Oh, um, let's see how Joanna. Ask, yeah, Joanna has a question. question. You want a question? Again, no, okay. fine, but for this, well, if you have a, it sounds like you have a question, so just ask oh. your question. <laughs> I've, I've got too many, um, way too many. Do you um, pick, tune in to animals that are alive? Um, sometimes. I'm not really an animal specialist, but uh, I do, you know, I tuned in to you having some anxiety about it. <laughs> Oh yes, I do. I do, and yeah. um, and you know, I want to get rid of the anxiety, but I don't know if something's wrong with him or if he's just talking. He moans a lot. Oh, when he, he's lying down and moving around, and oh, in a way, it's like he's talking, but he's also twelve, and I'm concerned he's in pain. Did you take him to check his arthritis levels of a? Uh... In the blood, you just have to do a blood test. Well, I can't afford a lot. I just did a um, a big checkup with him. He had surgery, which was like three hundred dollars, and and right now I I can't do any more. My mechanic blew my engine two weeks ago, so I'm in severe financial crisis. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking. Well, I talk- think the 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 most the most important thing is to. Um, See if you can let go of your anxiety because your anxiety makes it worse. Yes, yes. Um, because it's kind of like a well, I see it as like the infinity symbol. <laughs> uh huh. So there's a the connection is there, and the more anxiety you get, the worse the well the pain gets okay. because okay. there's also the protective sense. So you kind of uh, a, a, the a, your, your animal takes on your yes. um, anxiety oh, on top yeah. of the pain. Yeah. Yeah. So if okay. you want to release a little bit of the burden from your animal, you need to lower your anxiety and be okay. Okay. You know, it's okay. It's okay to get older. It's okay to be in pain. It's okay to have arthritis. Um, huh. What about but uh, if you, Joanna? You can't. Um, my dog. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I'm sorry. It's delayed. Well, okay. <laughs> you you can't uh, really comfort somebody if you are anxious or in in pain yourself because you're just making the situation worse. So, work on okay. yourself to take a deep breath and just be there. Okay. All right. He he is listening, and he just picked up a toy and flung it, which he doesn't do a lot. So he's seriously listening to you, and probably saying thank you. Oh, he's going to talk. Wow. Now. Yeah. Now, is it a dog? It's a dog. Yes. Now, uh, what you can do? Do you have YouTube? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, great. Because my dog. Now, this this is what works for my Shih Tzu. She's between 8 and 10, but she's gotten grumpy lately because we have a little cat that lives with us now that loves to antagonize her. But they both know at night, about 11 o'clock, I turn on YouTube and I look up binaural beats, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, and I put that on. And you can go to that Monroe Institute, too. They have different uh, beats as well. They call them hypersync. Uh, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. But you're they've learned to lay down and they know the sound and she'll go lay down on the bed. But that really helps relax and that binaural beats is some healing quality for us and pets as well. So you may want to try that. I've heard a lot of people uh, doing that, you know, in our spiritual community. So I absolutely will. I yeah, will. He'll, he'll learn how to lay down and relax and that'll make him sleep better. And uh, I use the, I use a little uh, pet, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but uh, this is just my opinion that sometimes those little pet Benadryls help, you know, okay. relieve them. But you just have to, uh, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm supposed to say that, but it's just my opinion. So you can buy them at, you know, Walmart or CRB or Walgreens or something. But 
Right. You know, anything like that will help sometimes, but always talk to, you know, your professionals, right? That's what right. you're supposed to do, what I'm supposed to right. say. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Love and light, dear. Thank you. And Thank come you back so and very much. Thank you both we'll so very much. Next week. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Johanna. I didn't know if uh, you wanted to do that or not, but no, uh, that's fine. I, yeah, I. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm used to. So, is anybody those, else? Uh, it's fine. Okay. Well, six oh seven. You're live and on the air with Johanna and Teresa. How are you today? Tell us where you're calling from. Oh, they hung up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry. They, they're like, oh no, I was just listening. <laughs> All right. Sorry, if you don't want to talk, 804, do you want to talk or say, ask a question or be part of the live show that's being recorded? Certainly. <laughs> All of the above. Thank you. <laughs> okay, wonderful. What's your name and where are you calling from? Teresa, this is Hugh, and you know I'm calling you from the center of the universe, Ashland, Virginia. Oh, hi. I hadn't talked to you in ages. Congratulations. You're still alive and well on planet Earth, right? So, Well, I have I'm a big pretty... mission and vision, and I guess spirit led to me to this show because I love the work that Johanna's doing and would like to help bring more attention to that and empower the masses globally. That's uh, especially women and indigenous people. And I just was looking at a little information and it says, awaken your inner butterfly. I actually had an encounter with a monarch butterfly that I discussed in a brief interview that people love to read. I'd like to share that where people can see that on the Internet. It was an interview, a short interview by the COPD Foundation. Well, I'm glad you called in. Johanna, this is an old friend of mine. He's a veteran, and uh, he has a long story to tell in the military, but he's uh, – Father was uh, very well known in the U.S. for creating a big, huge company, and he just has a long history in America. He's a patriot and a veteran. And Johanna, uh, he's always interested in spiritual healing. He's one of our veterans. I call it our Allied Command Intergalactic Relations people. But uh, (laughs) Johanna, uh, here, tell her your name and how – because you could go to her site like you apparently already did if you saw her butterfly because – Right? You already saw his website. Yeah, I don't do the email or texting, but if you can share my number with her and I'll spell my name and give the brief interview with the uh, uh, where I had the encounter with the monarch butterfly. My name is Hugh H U G H. Uh, last name Trollson is spelled T like Tom, then R A U L S like Sam, E like Edward, N like Nancy. And after my name, just put the words on, O-N, manifesting your future, and you'll come across that. And then once you see my name, you can put it on YouTube or Google it. I have documentable, extremely powerful synchronicities, which perhaps the Edgar Cayce Institute might take an interest in through uh, Johanna, too, uh, with the work that uh, Edgar Cayce was doing. Yeah, I'll check that out. And uh, if Teresa can give you my number, I can give it to you, too, yeah, if you don't mind, give Teresa. It yeah, give it to her, and y'all can yes, talk if you want to. Yes, area code uh, 804-798-1139. And are you in the Los Angeles area, Johanna? Yes. Yes, I lived out there years ago. I was there for the Silmar earthquake back in 1970. <laughs> I lived uh just north of Wilshire Boulevard on Normandy Avenue over near the Equitable Building. Yeah, I wasn't here then. I came after you to Los Angeles. Yeah, quite an interesting area. <laughs> I guess it's not too fun with all the fires and with the COVID-19 now, too. But well, but you yeah. don't email you don't email now, Hugh, do you? Because you're getting way no, up No, I there. still don't. I don't for many different reasons. I uh-huh. really want to awaken people to show if they don't have certain skills how to seek out mentors that can help them with technologies and uh, vice versa. They can help mentors uh, Mentors through the Internet can 
help hundreds, if not thousands of people instead of just a few, which we were limited to by technologies a couple of decades ago. Are you still working with that doctor? Is he still alive? Uh, Dr. Ed Maloney, I think you're referring to. He's uh, he's pretty much shut down. He's got a lot of problems with his eyes, uh, with macular generation or whatever, but uh, I, I touch base with him every so often. I'm more active with a cybersecurity expert who manages a lot of information on the Internet on my behalf. And uh, oh. I, th- I think you've seen oh. that big website. If you just Google three words, my last name, Trollson and Trump, that'll give my heritage and background. And there's letters from President Trump to me who I actually share common background with, but I'm not on the ego trip that he's on, so I leave him on his path <laughs> in that regard as I remain. Followers. Well, uh, I'll help any president in office, but they... Blower. Yeah, okay, exactly. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at it. All right, Ashland, Virginia, Hugh Charlson, folks, and uh, he's getting up there, but you're still out there marketing and public relations, and it's been a special guest. Uh, his family owned the worldwide uh, in hotels, troughs, and refrigerators and reefers, and we, we just uh, know that he's helped a lot of people around the world and helping entrepreneurs and just a very big sort of philanthropist and PR, helping make America beautiful and, uh, I guess, putting in freezers. <laughs> we well, I'm actually, I, that's uh, my heritage, but what I'm looking to do is to uh, transform the entire fields of global economics, education, politics, religion, and more based on new paradigms of spirituality and unconditional agape love, making everything transparent, ethical, legal, and moral. And on that Charleston and Trump page, since, again, Johanna is out in the Los Angeles area, you'll see an interview that was done by one of the most talented people on the planet, Dame Nicole Brandon who interviewed me a number of years ago, and she's a member of the Transformational Leadership Council upon which the movie The Secret was based. That's Jack Canfield's organization, the Chicken Soup Books. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's down here. Yeah, she's actually my muse. (laughs) Wow. Well, you go, Hugh. You're really out there still moving and shaking and manifesting, so... Prophecy Keepers with Hugh Charlson, folks. If you look up T R A U L S C N and look up him and his Trump letters, and I guess Trump's getting going to get publicity by getting his own uh, society going with uh, his own. I heard his own TV show or his own uh, what do they call it? his own broadcasting company, audio video. So we'll look forward to that, folks. And four more years, maybe later on, for all you folks that love entrepreneurs and what he's done. So, Hugh, are you still on the Trump train? Are you off? Well, again, I will help him as long as he's in office, but I've also reached out to President Obama when he was in office. You'll see letters from both of them on different pages on the website related to the economy. They tell me what they're doing, but they have no interest in empowering the people. (laughs) That's what is of concern to me. It's an agenda And I do know from my own research that these presidents are not who we think they are. They're just puppets for the elites. So I'm after the truth and transparency. So if I ever did interact with President Trump, it would be through a third party, never directly or in a back room, because you can't win because of his narcissism and the way he is as a sociopath. It's all about him, but I, it's just the opposite with me. I want to be a, a blessing as far and as wide as I can, and I don't sell anything. There's tools that are available related to video products to my business partner that I can help people tremendously with, but that's their choice. There's, so I'm not exclusive to anything. And again, just I say that we have to understand too that We came from spirit, even an atheist can't deny that, and we're going to go back into spirit eventually where the material goods have absolutely no use. So what are we really doing here? I think we incarnate to learn unconditional love, which is the lesson 
my wife blessed me with so beautifully as we learn it was supposed to be a blessing to others, especially those who can't help themselves and that we will be fully accountable for everything we did here. Well, uh, Johanna yep. is a dual citizen, and she just recently became an American citizen in 2020. So, oh, congratulations! Johanna... From what country? <laughs> I, I am. I am from Germany. Oh well, that's where my father's heritage is from. Yeah, uh, Schleswig-Holstein, Rendsburg, uh, Germany yeah. was where where he grew up. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, I'd like to do a lot with you to bring it back to Germany too, because it's so much confusion because of the way Trump has been acting and that brings back horrible situations related to Hitler and the Holocaust and everything too. So there's a lot that needs to be done over in Europe to get the truth and transparency into the forefront too. Right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we keep you in our prayers and you're a patriot. And like you said, folks, veterans are always honest to whoever's in the post. To the POTUS, the President of the United States of America, and I'm sure we're all Americans and love and light in our hearts, especially in our spiritual. But Hugh, I appreciate you being a loyal listener and a loyal member of our ACO club. You've always been one of the original plank owners of TJ Marcy T Radio and our American Communications Online. You've been one of the very first that held up the flag for not only indigenous but our American patriots. So thank you for that and our veterans. And, well, I appreciate uh, our relationship over the years and what you're doing <laughs> too. And I don't have all the answers, but I do say that if we just go into our hearts and connect with the creator, it's not about religion, but it's all about spirituality. And then look to be, a, 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 there's two energies, positive and negative. That's the basic thing. So always look for the love energy. That's God energy. That's the most powerful energy there is. So to stop the chaos, stop the racial baloney, give respect, and then start with respect in the communities and be solution-oriented. Nobody ever wins an argument. So instead, if you can bring forth solutions with respect for one another and root out the corruption, we will bring in the age of Aquarius peacefully and beautifully. So thank you again for giving me the time today well you you be sure and tell the doctor that he was uh evoked dr maloney okay love and light dear thank you thank you thank okay you. thanks all right yeah let's do six try 607 again <laughs> 607 <laughs> hello hi what's your name and where are you calling from i'm nicole from new york nicole from europe New from York. New York. Yeah. Oh, New York. Okay. Did you have a question for Johanna today? She's new, and this is her first time with us on Blog Talk Radio, so she's getting initiated. <laughs> All right. So, why do you see me spending Christmas? Wait, you broke up. Well, let's Can you repeat that? Remote view. Johanna, are you good at remote viewing her for Christmas from New York? I think she's asking, like, where will she be? Is that what you're asking? Like, are you going to move your physical reality somewhere else? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, jo- let me let Johanna hear your voice and see what's up for you. Usually we have to at least hear your voice if we can't see you. So, Johanna, you may – what kind of – she's asking, what twin do you see for Christmas? Do you need to hear her voice inflection more, Johanna? Um. No, I I tell you generally I don't uh, do things like that because it's um, a little bit of programming because there's more than one possibility for you to to be a place as a as a being and uh, actually there are lots of possibilities but I can you know maybe you know pick up on one or two of them but. Um, uh, since you asked, are you are you asking about completely moving or just going somewhere for the holidays? Uh, could be a move. Connecticut. Can you again? Yeah, let her hear your voice some more. What was your name again? Could be a oh, Nicole. Nicole.
Nicole. Actually, I, I don't. I, um, Nicole of New I, York. I do not see you moving from New York at this mo- at this time. Wow. Nicole, how's that feel? <laughs> That's fine. Is that okay? That's what she's picking yeah. up. Yeah, probably with COVID-19, it's not a good idea to be moving or seeing your physical reality uh, change well, I, a I lot. See, I, I mean, I see you really, like, um, held back, actually. So I don't know. I don't see that as COVID, but I see you... I see your feet really planted, very dirty, and they don't seem to want to go in any direction right now. So, if uh, you know, if you would, you know, if this was would be a longer mm. appointment or so, we would look into what is what is it that you're holding on to there. Um, Did you have your surgery, this, Nicole? My what? Did you have your surgery on your legs? Oh, I wasn't having surgery. You're not having surgery on your legs? No. Okay. <laughs> so, what what is what is uh, what what's what's holding you there? That's that's oh. really what to look at. There's a big strong energetic hold to keep you from moving away from there. Yeah. And so that's what you need to look at because, you you know, anything that any outcome can change, but um, you're, you're really not wanting that change is what I'm getting. Yeah. So it sounds so. like that she's really dedicated. Well, that's good in a way. So uh, maybe you're supposed to be an anchor where you are in the spiritual community. You know, sometimes uh, we may want to go with the flow and go with the wave or think we're supposed to be somewhere else, but it's like the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) Did you ever see Wizard of Oz? And, you know, (laughs) she was better off in her own backyard. She she went through that tornado (laughs) to another world. (laughs) Do you 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 have any more specific question about that? Yeah, tell Mm -hmm. us some more details. (laughs) Uh, uh, how are my friends what about your do you have you don't have a man in the military anymore yes out of steel all right Uh, what is he he overseas now or is he he may be okay well uh geez I'm getting that y'all need to be together, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Uh, but we are bringing troops back over, so I'm not sure which mm-hmm. way he's going, if he's coming or going. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that he can see if he's coming or going. So good luck with that, Nicole. But you know how strong you are emotionally. Are you going to try to get back into doing some kind of security or or something like that? What I okay. want to do is exercise, and I don't see it happening. Well, uh, I don't. I get there's something because of your exercising with your legs. So you need to decide what that is. Now, is okay. it you, you've not had any kind of geriatric surgery or anything like that, or bariatric? It's, excuse me. Um, it's my friend that had surgery on his legs, I believe. Okay. Well, uh, but what about you exercising? Is it because of the what, what's not getting you to move? And Johanna's a, a specialist. <laughs> uh, I energy. bought an exercise bike that just absolutely I cannot use. It's too hard and absolutely oh, can't use it. Well, well, you know, you you can you can start um, slower with what you can do. And That's then most good. of it, most of that is just discipline. But you, you asked about your your friends. Um, I, I mean, I, I see you really as kind of a little bit stuck where you are right now. Mm-hmm. And um, that's hence why I don't see you moving, even physically. But I, I see you. Um, <sighs> 
I mean, I want to say I think there's things going on and you're kind of stuck and a little bit stubborn mm -hmm. in it. So a, a softening up of your opinion would probably also make things open up and move a little bit better. So I would just start with, you know, moving a little bit around and while you're moving, just breathe and think of just softening, softening mm -hmm. yourself. And then as you soften yourself, things will open up again. Mm -hmm. Nicole, because start the, moving the, things around. You know, what, the, you know the, the treasure treasure game. When you start hiding things from yourself and then you go find them. But you, you need to start yeah. moving stuff feng shui. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really helped me. I, ca I got stuck. And so I've started redoing my house. And I feel so much better just doing more washing just moving, period. It really, really helps so you don't get blood clots, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, with, with the, that's, you know, the physical thing, I think you know what to do. But on, on the life thing, I think you need to just think about softening. I mean, it doesn't really matter who, who is right or wrong or what, what people say or think. It just, just soften up a bit. Okay. So thank and you, Nicole. Allow, you're, back. you're good. You're yeah, good to breathe some light into into your life and areas. Yep, love and light. There's some good uh, classes on that, love and healing. So, folks, we all mm -hmm. got to start doing our best to lighten up and feel better. Try to think of, of you're not fighting gravity. It's here to help keep you from floating away <laughs> float like a butterfly and sting like a bee nicole <laughs> okay okay love and light dear come back and see us we're hopefully going to do this more weekly okay. so come back and y'all know at the end of the show we'll do our best to help you out love and light dear we'll talk to you later Bye. good luck all right Thank let's you. see here let's try 520 Boy, we got 30 minutes left, girl. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> May have to have your teeth. 520, you're live and on the air with Johanna and Teresa. How may we assist you? Where are you calling from? What's your name? Wow. I just called in and I got in. My gosh, I'm lucky. I'm yeah, lucky. Yeah, you're lucky. I just happened to I'm see you. <laughs> and what's Arizona. your name? Lisa. Well, hi, Lisa, Lisa, Arizona. This is Johanna. She's new, with, and uh, we seem to have some past life energy going on, but I'm really looking forward to getting to know her and hope you are too. So, Lisa from Arizona, Johanna would like you to ask a question, and then maybe she can help you out. Let's okay. try that. Okay. Um, I'm hoping to sell some property and then relocate. You see that happening within the next month or so? Wow, you're on a time pressure, huh? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm done. I want to move on, you know. It's not um, pressure. It's me, self-imposed. <laughs> okay, I, I don't, you know, when I look at things from the spirit world, I, I don't really um, tap into time frames that easily. Sometimes okay. um, that works, but just your your energy and your vibration feels like you've already taken off from where you are at. So I, yeah. even before you said that, I kind of saw this bird taking off in flight, and it's, oh, wow. it's very exciting, and it feels like you're going to um, a really exciting new place. So oh, is yay. it going to happen in the next four weeks? Uh, I I don't I can't answer that or I just you know I would have to guess because I'm not showing any numbers being shown any numbers but I I mean your feet have already left off <laughs> so I'm thinking it's fairly yeah. soon so oh, you're good. just like wow and um, but more, more than that is uh, what you're going towards you're going towards yeah. something really. Um, exciting and wonderful oh, and oh, so that's kind you. of the wind under your wings is uh that excitement it's really beautiful to yeah. see it's like wow oh, i'm enjoying it i love it <laughs> Ooh, you're 
you're making me so happy. <laughs> well, yeah. here, it's a beautiful picture, so I love it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because it's and a giant uh, also, step for me. Well, are you are you gonna go somewhere? Um, okay, so I I see um, you know younger people, children too, in, in the new yes. place. Oh, you're so cool! Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so happy that you see that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, a, a lot of like. Um, children excitement <laughs> there's, oh there's this gosh. whole light, lightness of being around it so good luck with that <laughs> yes yeah it's my grandchild yeah. <laughs> and he he has siblings you know but they're not I'm only I only know them through him but yeah no that's wonderful yeah, it seems like you're well on your way. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm. I've been pushing the boulder uphill, and it feels like I'm almost at the top. That's what it feels like. Well, I, I'd like you to change that picture. You're not pushing any boulder uphill against the universe. You are just, you know, in the holding pattern, waiting for the right wind to carry you off. When well, you know, it's not, you know, I don't look at it as against the universe. It's more about I'm leaving behind a multi-decade relationship. I'm oh, stepping away from that. Okay. I'm serious. I'm complete. I'm, yeah, I'm completely relocating. And wow. I'm leaving behind wow. everything and starting new, starting fresh. So that's what's what pushing the boulder. Is. And then tying up loose ends on the physical level you know, making the sale and then collecting the money and going. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you go, girl. <laughs> you got a future ahead <laughs> of you that's waiting for you. you. Just um, That's wonderful. Well, thank you, Lisa, the, for sharing with our thank show. You. Anything else? Anything else, Johanna? Or is that, are y'all complete? Mm-hmm. No, good. I think that was the question. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. That thank, was, you were 520, you. right? Yeah, she yeah. just called him. All right, thank you. All right, let's see who else we got here. Let's see, we did 203, didn't we? 804 was Hugh. He's still listening. We just, and we did 607, didn't we? We did 607, right? <laughs> Who's it? Oh, God, I don't know. Who's this? Is that the one we asked if you hung up or not? <laughs> I think it was. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for right now. I think we've got everybody from the, all the numbers look familiar now. They're re, they're just listening. So you've got 20 minutes left on this live recording, uh, folks. We're live streaming from uh, Gulf Breeze, Florida, into the New York studio. And Johanna's called in from Los Angeles, California. She's a best-selling author of The Transformation Promise, and she's recently fixed a uh, workbook, if you'd like to locate it, 28 Days to Love, Joy, and Prosperity. And she's helped clients worldwide, all over the world, and she f- travels and does workshops. She's done Edgar Casey, and she's done Germany, and helps people with their transformations and guidance and life between lives, and stayed with Michael Newton. You want to tell us some more about... Uh, your sustaining and fulfilling relationships uh, with this end of 2020, but you did become a citizen of America. So uh, tell us about good things that are happening. We have other people calling in, but uh, folks, while we're waiting, I see 707, but this transformation of you in your entirety going from uh, dual citizenship, but becoming an American, what is, what was that that made you want to become an American in in these turmoil times when people in America don't know how good they have it? And I, I'm a I've traveled the world, Johanna, in and out of uniform with the military. So 
I and I was a tourist too, Africa, Portugal, Spain, Europe, Japan. So I've been all over. But I know this is a beautiful country, and I appreciate you becoming American. Makes me feel closer to you. But what is it that makes you want to do that? Well, I wish I had a really cool answer to that, but I'm going to stick with the honest <laughs> one. Um, <laughs> well, make one up. No, seriously, what's in your soul? You're so um, comfortable in America? I, you know, no, I never really think of myself as a citizen of any particular system or anything like that. So I um, I, I think I'm a, a citizen of Earth when I think of myself for right now. But, um, yeah, so I wish I had a cooler answer, but I'm going to stick with the honest one. I went back to Germany for a while to help a relative in her final transition out of this body. And as a green card person, which was totally fine with me, um, you can't stay out of the country for a long period of time and then leave the country again if you had to do that. So I thought I don't, I don't want to be, um, you know, not freely moving between my two homes. So I had to add America to another permanent citizenship home. Well, that's wonderful. So many people, that's such a gift to so many people can't get that. And I've been watching a lot of documentaries about people wanting to get health or help in America and how you know it's going to change, we hope, with the Democratic administration helping people. But that Mitch McConnell sitting on the money on the Republican side, I don't know if that's true or not, because folks, we just don't know out there what to believe anymore. When you hear it, it doesn't matter what station you're listening but Johanna's telling you like it is this is live on the air and she's right here with us and I'm here in Gulf Breeze so we're talking about reality and in 2020 being in America is you know in the globally it people want to make you think it's not happening but we're still Americans and the world is working together and people like Johanna and I are coming together to hopefully make the world a better place in our web and looking at the matrix together with people like you heard Hugh Charlson, and hopefully all of you. Let's see what uh, 707 is about. Okay, Johanna, 707, you're live and on the air with Johanna Dobolowski or Dobolowski and Teresa J. Morris. How are you? Hi, yeah. I'm fine. How are you, ladies? All right. Um, We're uh, – What's your name and where are you calling from? And did you want to ask sure. a question of Johanna today? I did. Yes. Valerie, California. Okay. Johanna? Oh. Yeah. This is Valerie. Uh, ask, uh, you want to ask Johanna anything about yourself here in the last part of 2020? Yeah. Uh, relationship coming in the first half of 2021, because 2020 is pretty much gone. And I don't know if you do medical questions as well. Um, not, well, just ask if I get an answer. I'll, if I get something, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I have uh, vibrations in my left ear. Uh, something goes mostly at night. And I was just wondering, is there something I could do to alleviate that, or is it an infection or something going on? Okay, well, what was your first question? Let me have that one again. Oh, the first one was relationship. Do you see a committed uh, relationship coming in in 2021, first half? Okay, so um, Valerie, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I don't see you being that open towards a relationship. So I think there's a, a, a few people around you that are interested, but you are, um, I, I don't see you being as open as you would like people to think you are. Um, Yeah. 
So that that kind of needs to change first. And I don't know if it's like a fear of making a mistake um, well, there's... or that you, you want it to be just perfect, which there is no such thing. No, um, I as a... perfect. No. No, I just have been out of a relationship for a long time and was just wondering to one, uh, there is no one around me so far as, what you're saying. So, I don't know. Well, I I I see several people in in the field around you, um, and uh, I mostly see you know you're well you know you're waiting for it to come to you, which is a good thing. Um, but make sure your door is really open. It has been open for quite some time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yes and no. Um, Like, like on the the energy level, what I see is that you you are. um, Well, I would say that there's a what I feel is like a little bit of a I don't want to make a mistake here. Um. It's not that. Just be more like going onto the playground. Think of it as going onto right. the playground. Right, right. That, yeah, I'm open to receive. So I, I would uh, kind of let go of that committed relationship thing okay. and just say I'm ready to go to just play in the playground. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Because that will that will take some, some of the... Um, well, that door that I see off, <laughs> it'll open that door. If you okay. if you think of it as as that more than than anything, and um, because when okay. you when you play, your energy is lighter. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Then and when you say relationship, what what I feel is like it's like a curtain coming down. Okay. So there's like a well, heaviness to that word relationship for you, and I would just. Delete that word. Delete it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> delete it. Just say, you know, yeah. like a really it's cool deleted. friendship. Because if you're in a relationship, yeah. that's what you want it to be. You want it to be a really oh, sure. cool friendship. Correct. So if you just focus that's, on that's... finding a really cool friendship that can easily turn into a relationship without the um, without the weight. Okay. So without the heavy take, weight. Right. But you're so basically once the mindset is changed, then it's a possibility of some of someone coming in. Yes, because also the, the there's one person in particular that I'm seeing and that is not mm-hmm. somebody that you see as relationship material. But um so if you meet, this is not a person you'd see as being a person that would be anywhere near that word relationship. <laughs> but the moment you change it up to just really cool friendship, uh-huh. something something happens and you really get close. So I think that, um, yeah, I think just move away from any kind of expectation about relationship and change it to the just best coolest friendship okay. you know like soul friends right okay and that can come in any shape or form without your preconceived ideas of what a relationship would be like okay so get rid of any list that I have and I'll have nothing right just go out and have fun <laughs> right uh, well, there's there's uh, definitely more more than one person around you, but there's one in particular, and that one is kind of more of a surprise than okay. You know. Right now, there's, yeah, there's no one around me right now. Uh, well, you so don't I'm know like, that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm it could seeing. be in your vicinity. I mean, it's it, it's around you. You don't have to go anywhere for it. There, there there's be people around you. Okay. 
All like right. you don't have to travel or join clubs or anything like that. You just sort of have to uh, relax the whole issue. Okay. Um, I, I don't, you know, get anything really with the ear. Um, so, you know, obviously I would recommend that you go have that checked out. Oh, sure. Yes, definitely. But um, I, I do, you know, sometimes you may want to check out if there's somebody trying to communicate with you. Yeah, I keep hearing that. So, yeah, okay. It feels like somebody's, you know, and it can still have a medical thing on the other side of it, but um, on the spiritual side, it is uh, somebody wants to communicate. So set aside some time, maybe do some automatic writing or so and see if something comes through. Okay. I shall. Okay, well, let me, I'm going to get in the playground now. So. <laughs> yeah, enjoy yourself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Teresa, are you still there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I had to now. swap phones. My other cell phone ran out of juice, <laughs> but uh, it's been a great show, Johanna. I think you did good your first time with me, and I thought it was going to be a totally different show, but that's okay. And we can always, somehow, even though I don't put up, we're going to do readings somehow. People just know if they tune into Blog Talk on Thursdays and spirituality that they'll they'll look for a show. But they know the TJ Mars ET Radio always does readings. <laughs> they tune in for the readings. They are to be a part of the show or just to hear other people, uh, you know, their what's going on for them, and they feel connected. Turtle, I call it my ACO Club or Ascension Center Ohana or Ascension Church Ohana. And, ACE Metaphysical Institute, but uh, I think you did good just on the fly, not knowing, you know, what you didn't, we didn't even discuss you doing readings or anything, but especially blind or cold, as we say in the (laughs) business, Uh, I think you did pretty good, and some of the people are sticking around just to hear what happens. Well, would you like to return again sometime, or uh, you're welcome, uh, I've got another girl in California I want you to meet, and her name is Gigi on Facebook, and she was going to start helping on Thursdays. But you're welcome to come back uh, if yeah, you feel I'd comfortable. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, put it, it on fun. your calendar. And uh, <laughs> okay. Thursdays I do readings, and uh, sometimes I have people like you that are spiritual or have written books or furthering our cause. But I I like your talk about the web and, you know, really, I really want people to realize that in this new reset that we're going into in 2021, whether people are, you know, we're blending into the cryptocurrency online currency with uh, old money, old cash, and then, you know, credit cards and the central banks and, so people are wondering about what the new currency is going to be, but it's still electronic, basically. I, I very seldom have any cash anymore. How about you, Johanna? Is yours oh, just I, transferred I love to the cash. bank? <laughs> you like cash? Got a yeah, cash app, do you? <laughs> a lot of people have a I cash mean, app, but it's still else, electronic. But I mean, you know, if I know how much cash I have, I don't, you know, I'm not tempted to go beyond that pay you for a session. Now, you do psychic readings, and you also do uh, past life regression, and you also do counseling uh, on source of major depression or health issues or dealing well, you know, I, with yeah, large do, relations, um, life coaching. So you do a lot of the same yeah. things I do, but I don't want to work very hard at it. So if people <laughs> cross my paths, or I'll put them on the radio to help them out, but uh, you know, I did a Halloween show with some military and law enforcement officers and some antique dealers here in Gulf Breeze and, you know, well-to-do area. It was a lot of fun, and I got paid really nice, you know, on Halloween. Halloween's a big payday, folks, if y'all don't know, for a psychic reader. Yeah. Especially when I do Tarot. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I had a good time here in Gulf Breeze, and we were doing two shows a year, the psychic group, health group, uh, 
metaphysical body, mind, spirit people with Erica Booster Haney. She has two of the shows here in Gulf Breeze and uh, at the conference center here in the bar. But I, I hope we're going to have them back on the schedule in 2021. So, folks, everybody, you know, pray that these vaccines are going to help us. And uh, for those that want them and those that don't, I guess that's going to be fine. I don't know that we're in a you have to, but I've heard they may keep you from getting jobs if you don't. So there's our kind of talk, but just be open-minded about our changes in the future. So uh, any last words, Johanna, of peace and prosperity in 21? You see the light at the end of the tunnel you want to share with people? Well, I, I think be kind to everybody. So if you just be kind to yourself and everybody else. Be kind. That is That's my what my big daughter advice. said. She passed on. Everybody remember Gigi, my little girl from heaven, my little yeah. ET girl that passed on March uh, 16th. She was really 15th, and God told me before he was going to take her that day to prepare me. In my room, I about fell to my knees, but I knew it. It came to my head. So being ET or one that's connected to those above from near death and out of body, sometimes it, you get messages you don't really understand, but you know you... You want to know, but you don't want to know. So, you know, we'll help those that uh, we're supposed to help. And sometimes everybody gets messages. I believe we're all psychic. We're all using our, our blessings. So let's all do some better webbing as uh, Joanna's helping us here. The Internet, World Wide Web, and working together to make the world a better place. I love that, Johanna. And uh, help, healing through the heart. You said you work with the mind yeah. and the heart body, heal through the quantum heart field experience. And uh, we'll have some of her love, light, energy, and guidance. And I hope uh, that you're uh, like this as well, Johanna, to get the download once uh, we close it out. It'll be, uh, you just come back, folks, to blogtalkradio.com forward slash TJ Mars ET Radio. And on the, uh, when you go into that site, just look for this show tonight. And on the right-hand side, it'll have little, you know, little boxes, and it'll say upload or embed, and pick the one you want for your website so you can go put it on there. And, Johanna, you know how to load a link over there. You can put it on your website, yes. right, under your list. <laughs> Good. I do. And then, okay. <laughs> well, Johanna, it's been a delight. I hope you like Janet, and uh, we'll get to know you better. And, folks, we have a lot of beautiful people in our groups, ACO Club. You can find me on Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. A lot of our visual and performing artists and radio hosts use those to build our communities. And Minds American Communications Online, with, with uh, communication with an S, American Communications Online. And then I have UAP.associates, A-C-I-R Radio, and of course, TJ Marcy T Radio right here. And we're on iHeart, all over Speaker, Spreaker, Spotify, oh, so many places. You can just Google TJ Marcy T Radio and find me. And now you'll be able to find Johanna Derbalowski, too, Wise Quantum Women. <laughs> and uh, Janet wants us to do Wise Wild Women on her behalf. We had Wise Women show. I told people in LinkedIn I was going to start a PR a campaign for wise women here for us in 2021. So all of you out there that want to help and uh, be a part of our show, please let me know or just tune in. The call-in number is always the same at the top of Blog Talk Radio, TJ Marcy T Radio, but I will list it. Call in 347-945-7207 for all of you that are going to hear it on YouTube and out there on our videos. Thank you so much, Johanna. We're out of time. Thank I look you. forward to welcome to come back next week then. I don't really have anybody planned. I have some people, but uh, folks, stay. Uh, we're going to have some uh, a gentleman, too, out of California soon. And you may remember John. I can't remember his last name now, but I talked to him today. He wants to come on. So, uh, Johanna, we we'll look forward to get you uh, all connected to all our people in our web, okay? Well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me on. It was wonderful. Right. That oh, was good. It was a good show, folks. And Hugh Charleston, thank you. And y'all keep everybody, our veterans, in mind. Let's do a good job. And like she said, be kind. Never hurts to be kind. Love and light, everybody. Thank you.
Love and light. Thank you.